Hey guys, it's Regina. I am bringing you guys some new study information, but before we get started, I want you to kind of think about what is your motivation for studying? Why are you doing all of this? It's easy to get into a rut and think, oh, this is just another thing that I have to cross off on my list of things to do, but when you have your reason for doing all this hard work in the front of your mind, it, it motivates you to get it done, right? Salome is my reason for working so hard. And there are times when I feel like giving up and I feel like I don't know if what I'm doing is making a difference, but seeing her little face smile and being able to give her things that I didn't have as a kid makes me continue on. I'm gonna give you some lecture information on parathyroidism. It's really important to know if you're getting ready to take NCLEX, so here it is. These are your notes for parathyroidism for NCLEX. This is such an easy su subject to study because when it comes to the parathyroid hormone, point number one is that it's all about calcium. And point number two is the parathyroid hormone and calcium always go in the same direction. So if the parathyroid hormone is down, the patient's calcium levels will also be down. And if the parathyroid hormone is up, you can bet that the serum calcium level will be up as well. But why do we care about the parathyroid hormone? What is the big deal? Well, it is very important because it helps the body to reabsorb calcium. There are three organ systems that are involved. The first one is the intestines. Yep, they absorb calcium in the gut. The second are bones. Bones are, they're very important because they help with the resorption which decreases serum calcium levels. And if you don't know what resorption means, guess what I want you to do? I want you to look it up. Yes, because that is how we study for NCLEX. We look up words, we look up medications, we look up diseases that we don't know. The third organ system are your kidneys, which help to reabsorb calcium. Now, we're going to talk about two parathyroid disorders. The first one is hypoparathyroidism, which means that you do not have enough of the parathyroid hormone. And when you don't have enough, guess what you will lose? You're going to lose some calcium. So the intestines won't absorb the calcium that they normally would. As far as the bones go, there'll be less resorption, so the calcium will actually stay in the bones, which will decrease serum calcium levels in your patient. And the kidneys, because there's not enough of the parathyroid hormone, the kidneys, the kidneys will let go of all of the calcium, they'll release it, and you will see an increase in the calcium levels in the urine. What are the signs and symptoms of hypoparathyroidism? Well, the main symptoms are trousseau sign, Chibosex sign, and tetany. You can also have other symptoms such as paresthesia, cramping, fatigue, patchy hair loss, and dry skin. Now, if you notice the symptoms of uh, cramping, patchy hair loss, fatigue, and dry skin, those also are symptoms of what? hypothyroidism yes so they're very close what is our treatment for hypoparathyroidism well our treatment is to give our patient supplemental calcium along with vitamin d which route do we give the calcium and the vitamin d we want to give it orally to our patients now, you guys know that there's a lot of teaching on NCLEX. So, as far as hypoparathyroidism goes, we tell our patients to limit chocolate as it affects the absorption of calcium. Also, calcium is very important in our cardio electrophysiology. If you guys remember, there are three channels that ions move across in order to create heartbeats. Calcium is one of those channels. What are the other two channels? Can you name them? You have calcium, you have potassium, 
and you have a sodium. So you have a calcium channel, a potassium channel, and a sodium channel. So when you're administering additional calcium to your patient, you want to monitor what their heart is doing because high calcium levels can cause hypotension, cardiac dysrhythmias, and potentially cardiac arrest. Some people might be asking, why are you giving calcium and vitamin D? Why don't you just give some more parathyroid hormone? Well, because it's very expensive to give parathyroid hormone. So there's a more cost-effective and sensible way to treat this. Well, what about hyperparathyroidism? You guys have a good handle on hypoparathyroidism, but let's go to the other side where there is too much of the parathyroid hormone. So what's happening now is you have an increased calcium absorption from the intestines. Also, there will be an increased resorption from the bones, which actually means that the calcium will be leaving the bones, going into the bloodstream, which can cause osteoporosis. And we have the kidneys reabsorbing lots of calcium. So you will see less in the urine, but this is gonna cause another problem for our patients. The signs and symptoms are bones, stones, abdominal moans, and psychic groans. So that's a fun way to remember it, but what does all that mean? So if we focus on our bones, I said that our patient will have some osteoporosis. Stones mean renal calculi. Abdominal moans are the GI symptoms because the intestines are absorbing extra calcium. So it's going to cause some abdominal pain in our patients. And the psychic groans are symptoms of depression and psychosis that can occur when a patient has a high calcium level. How do we treat it? Well, 90% of the time you use surgery and you do a parathyroidectomy. Now, this could be a partial or a complete, but the parathyroid glands are removed. And remember, whenever you have some surgery done to the neck, you want to inspect the site for bleeding, especially looking at the back of the neck where blood tends to drain and pool Keep your patient in the supine position and keep a tracheostomy tray at the bedside. So just a review, for hypoparathyroidism, the major signs are tingling, tetany, trousseaus, and trubosex sign. Our laboratory values, you will see a decrease in the parathyroid hormone, which will also lead to a decrease in the calcium level. The phosphorus and magnesium levels, however, will be elevated. In hyperparathyroidism, our signs are bones, stones, abdominal groans, and psychic moans. Our labs are an increased parathyroid hormone level, an increased calcium level, and a decrease in our phosphorus level. I so hope you guys like this presentation. Thank you for studying with Remar Review, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.